So go ahead and let's see, I'm gonna edit this part out. Bloopers. <clears throat> All right, so we're back out here on the boat. And uh, forgive me for not uploading a video last week. The wife and I took a much needed vacation over to the Baha or the uh, yeah the Bahamas, and then to um, Dominican Republic and uh, Be uh, British Virgin Islands and a few other things, and then the St. Thomas. So we're gone for a whole week. It was a great reset, but the bad thing is, and I don't remember what I was doing on the boat. So I believe where we left off was the floor panels, and they are done. And I'll show you those. I didn't get to show you the outro of the other one. But here are the floor panels. And they're stiff. They are cured. They came out phenom. So I think that we're going to have a good time with those. And yeah. I'm excited. So what I was going to do today is I was at least going to try to get the stuff cut out for the live wells the back ones so here's where we're going with the live wells i had to sit there and figure it out for a second but i think what we're going to do <coughs> is we are going to use some floor pieces just like we did for the floor to trim out the sides so the plan so these windows are all, of course going to be see-through live wells so what I've done here is I've marked out half inch, one inch, one and a half, and two. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm going to install the floor pieces throughout the whole thing, the uh, supports. And then I'm gonna cut a bottom that is just simply going to adhere to the boat. So what I'll do with those pieces is I'll put supports on all four corners or all four sides so that when the floor piece sits in there, I can glass it all in. And then I'll probably just remove those supports and fill in the holes. Don't know yet, figure it out, but um, that's what we're gonna do. But first what I've gotta do is I need to, I'm not ready to do it first, but I'm going to remove this cardboard. It's, it's pretty in there. It was done when we did these patches as a backing. Um, so these patches, Right here, there, there, at the backing, and uh, they came out pretty good. So I'm gonna sand that off. I have to sand all this down. I've got to remove this inner liner. It goes all the way around to the old live well liner, and then I've got to go ahead and. And the old live well was much smaller than this. So what we're sacrificing in in depth, we are getting back in girth, and uh, so the volume is about the same. So <clears throat> the live wall is going to be there. This is still going to be a pocket. So this will still be a way to store stuff. Probably going to put, um, you know, stuff in there. I won't be able to get to it from the front of the boat, but I'll still be able to get to it from the back of the boat. Um, and go from there. This, so I, it's crazy shooting with an iPhone 8 versus the iPhone 14. Crazy difference. So yeah, that's what I'm going to do. And then that way, all this inner stuff, I can seal all this stuff up and all these holes and everything can be sealed. And this will be a dry hatch area for whatever we're going to put in there. So I still got to cut a little thing for that. I thought the foam was going to go there. That's why I put that little piece of fiberglass in there. I always meant to remove it, but it, the foam didn't go up that high on either one, either one of them. So I'm going to cut out a piece of... Uh, honeycomb bedded in there with thickened epoxy make that one full piece fill all those holes in there with some putty sand all that down and that way we can re-gel coat this and make it a nice little box so um, I don't see any benefit to really having to get it from this side I think I'm gonna do it all at one time though so I'll probably get dressed in the suit and I'm gonna cut out this wood cut out that wood sand the crap out of all this stuff get all that gel cut off sand all of this because it's got to get gel coated too trim all that up and then whatever i can do 
I will start uh, looking at stuff <clears throat> to do that because I'm gonna have to remove this tarp to get the to get the good old sanding done and down. So, uh, but I will set up the cameras when I do it, and I think that's what we're gonna do today: is trim, trim, sand, and go from there. It's gonna be a crappy day. You guys won't have to listen to this fan. We'll be listening to nice music during this time lapse. watch the time lapse or where this is in the video but uh, I'm done grinding and I will show you the fruits of our labor it always zooms in so much right. so went through four or five discs but got all the cardboard off the sides um, most the so this was done after this this foam was done after like I cut the liner out and I should have waited, but I don't have any more discs. So I have to get back in here on Thursday and get it. I still have to get that wood out, this wood and this wood. It's a pain in the butt. Fresh wood's always sucky, um, but get that out. I'm, I'm not opposed to leaving a letter right out and do it later, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting the boards for this uh, because I do need to install the floor first. And once I install the floor of the live well first, I'll be able to build the sides here. I'm gonna put a piece of honeycomb from here to there. I want to, like I said, I need to get rid of this so I can put honeycomb on here and around the sides, and then honeycomb on this. And reinforce, you can see how flimsy that is. We will uh, go from there. All right, so we're back out here. Left off with the Right side, port side fish box being completely done. Nope. Yeah, port side fish box being done. There's a little bit of foam on the top that we gotta take out, which we're gonna do. So when we do that, we are going to also use the big grinder to do the starboard side fish box. Or live well, not fish box. So when we do the starboard side live well, we are going to get it all prepped and everything because it's kind of cold it's 50 something degrees out and we're not going to be able to get the resin to kick i don't think so i'm gonna spend the majority of my time cutting the honeycomb for all the fish boxes and then and get the boxes prepped and if i can i'm gonna do lay the layups today to where they all harden uh, i will be back out here tomorrow I have daddy daycare on Tuesdays and Thursdays now, so I'm not going to be able to get to like I've been getting to. So I'm trying to put in some more days on the weekends. So on Sundays, I can upload the videos for you guys and we can get it uh, rolling. Uh, so that's uh, grinding, get dressed, and get it worked. I get the GoPros going and everything else. The end of this video, uh, this Sunday, I promise, I know I've been promising it, 
I'm gonna get the cost breakdown so far. So the, the Suzuki's, all the resin, all the fiberglass, all the stuff, minus time. Time is every day, an hour, two hours, three hours, and then going from there. So I will get the, time, uh, the, the breakdown of cost so far. We are getting ready to spend a little bit more money on resin. I believe we're gonna be good for everything else, but the resin goes pretty quick and I use polyester resin for almost everything. I don't use the fillers or anything like that, uh, unless it's on the console. So. When I make the fillets for everything, whether it's the fish box, live well, pitch well, whatever, I'm going to create it with Capisol and resin because I have a ton of Capisol. So we'll go from there and then uh, I'll sit down, we'll edit this thing out at the very end of this video. Stay till the end, like and subscribe, do all those other things, and we will go ahead and get the um, breakdown of cost done. Let's get the breakdown of cost done. You can stop the video because it'll be the end. And we'll be good. Here's what we did. Turn this off for a bit. This box is done. It's good. So you can see in the top. Got all that wood out. Cleaned up all the fiberglass. And I'm gonna restructure it. Good thing, I mean, I keep finding these spots where I said I'm gonna keep old, old boat, but look how thin that is. All the holes. So I mean it's so thin. So I'm gonna build a whole new wall for this. Instead of just patching this area here. So go ahead and build a whole new wall and put this back the way it was. So it's gonna go all the way to the to the hole here along the bottom. It's gonna go all the way to the top where this is, cover all that up, and then I'll patch all this later. So and then it'll be the same on that side, same on that side. But while I'm dressed, I'm gonna get that box on. GoPro died. This is what I got came up with, and it's gonna take care of all this holes. I'm gonna cut that out, and I'm gonna do the same to that. So having my little over cut one is fine. Cut that out, and then it takes care of my wall. And that fits very nicely. So I think I'm gonna go with that, and <clears throat> we will have it all patched in. It goes all the way up. I got all that wood out. So I'll glue that together, throw a piece of wood, piece of glass on it, stick it in, and then I'll probably brace it from the back, but I'm gonna do all layups at one time. So I've got the back piece cut right here. And then I've got the left. This is no longer the front. So that's the bottom, so bottom back, left side. And then
kind of see how it's coming together. I got to trim this because I added a half an inch because I wasn't expecting to put that wall in. So I'll trim off a half an inch. And then it will go flush to the top over there. Flush to there. Flush to there. And then I'll probably end up adding a piece here that goes all the way up. And then I don't know, doing something with the with the space. So I like it. That's how they're all going to go together. Put the window here, front, top, left side, top, back, top, bottom, and I've marked where they go, and then that's the right side. So, inshallah, everything goes in that direction. inside pieces that touch the boat so I'm gonna glass these put them inside the boat glass those put them inside the boat and brace it all up but I am also am going to lay down pieces of glass along the outside and along the seams I'm pretty sure yeah, it's not going to be time to get what I need done. I'm going to get a glass. I want to do it all one time. I'll probably do it tomorrow morning. But it's all cut out. I'll probably cut the rest of it out today and do the other pieces. Here's the finished product. So, like I said, I think you saw this yesterday. I glassed that in, 
Got these front pieces last in here up to the skin. And I, today I did the inside. This 1708 glass job looks pretty good. So, and then down there, I have the bottom and the stiffeners are in there. So, that's it for today. Next time you see me, I'll be sitting at the desk doing the numbers. I hope this thing is recording. All right. So, here's what we've done. Here's, here's what I have. <clears throat> I built the spreadsheet a long time ago, and I basically went ahead and put in the stuff that I wanted to buy that I thought I was going to need. And I ended up uh, with this all this stuff that I know I'm going to want, like trim tabs, helm stuff, and everything. And that's not even factored into what I've already spent. So, uh, let's see. I bought all this stuff, and if I check it, it lets me know that I've done it. So, inadequate panels um, and stuff. All right. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> so, we are going to paint the boat all grip blue, but it's not, I have a body yet, it's not there. So we'll go down, alright, so, Joko, I have five gallons of Joko, it's sitting at the, I don't know why it's not there, oh, it's be open. Uh, it is sitting over there at the house where I do the boat, and it basically is going to be $269. Uh, I bought the Suzuki controls off Facebook Marketplace, you guys have seen me mock those up. Uh, I bought the extension harness and the main harness, it didn't come with that, off of eBay, for that much, for $197.67. Now, I went and water tested these Suzuki's and I bought them for $15,000. I went ahead and I wanted flyby wires. I made sure, I told myself, I looked for months, and I said if a pair of 150 Suzuki's or above, I, if I was I might not have gone 200, but we, did, we, you know, we don't know. But if a pair of 150 or above came on the market, flyby wire for 15 grand or less, I was immediately gonna buy them. These happened to be in Daytona. They were only 30 minutes from my house, and I jumped on them the next day, went and water tested them, ran great, so the uh, marina took them off, threw them on a pallet for me, and they are sitting at my buddy's house, gonna go on the boat as soon as we get it done. Uh, I bought six five-gallon buckets, so uh, whatever that math is, I'm drawing a blank, don't remember, three, 30, 30 gallons, <clears throat> so 30 gallons of resin, um, for a total of thousand dollars, we're going to buy a little more. When I built the tanks, I bought some argon off Facebook Marketplace. Came with a bottle. I needed to get that anyway, uh, so I went and got that. But it didn't factor in. I but, well, I, but it did factor in there, but didn't uh, add it together. Was I got a refill for the argon for another hundred fifty bucks? So I think I bought the bottle for two fifty, and then I think I paid a hundred bucks for the refill. I bought 25 Tyvek suits that you see me wear all the time to grind stuff. That was 163 bucks off Amazon. I bought a 10 pound bag of Cabasol from US Composites. That box of Cabasol you see me using, uh, that's only half of it. And uh, we're gonna end up using a lot more to do the fillets. Uh, so I've still got that. Um, the Kusa, you saw me, see me cut that up. I only had one sheet of that. I'm trying not to buy any more. I may go buy another, another one, I don't know yet. Uh, but that was 235 bucks. I bought a bunch of paintbrushes, a bunch of rollers, a bunch of fiberglass kits uh, for the rollers off of Amazon and Harbor Freight. Uh, I bought those Nidacore panels. I bought eight of them. I bought the first five, and then I needed three more, so I got them. Um, I bought that tabletop epoxy to do the front boxes, which later on you're going to know that I'm going to tear those out probably and redo them. However, you know, they, uh, I did buy it, I still have it. It's, it was 244 bucks. My wife uses it to paint pens and, and, you know, cups and stuff, so that's fine. Uh, I ended up buying all that foam. Um, I bought an 80 pound, 80 pound kit when I ran out of the two gallons. I bought four of these uh, 16 pound kits. And we, you know, as you saw in the last video or two videos ago, no, last video, uh, they ended up not having to be, not, not enough. So I bought all that other foam. I still have a little left. I'm trying to use it sparingly, but I will end up using some more of that very soon. I went and bought that R-Value foam for the fish box, or for the uh, some of the fish box stuff, and for the uh, coolers. I have two of those from Lowe's for 60 bucks, and it was like R14 or R8 or something like that. It's really good stuff. Um, <clears throat> all my fiberglass 
uh, the 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 tape. No, this was the the e glass. It's really easy to work with. I haven't used a lot of it yet. Uh, I've been using 1708 for all the structural pieces. Uh, when I did the aluminum gas tanks, I bought 100 uh, four sheets for 100 bucks a piece. The coal tar epoxy uh, for the gas tanks from Amazon. It was 212 bucks. I looked around, couldn't find a better price, so just scooped it off Amazon. Uh, the 17 way tape, that's pretty useful stuff. It's 12 inches wide. It keeps me from having to cut big, big things of tape along. And um, it's pretty, if you're going to do a boat, uh, I would definitely highly suggest buying a roll of that. Uh, the mold release for when I make the hatches, I haven't used it yet. It's still uh, my buddy's house. Um, I did buy a whole roll of 1708. I used some of the stuff I had before from a long time ago. I ended up using all that up, and now I have uh, have this roll still going. I have about half of it left. I think I'm going to be good for the floors, uh, but that's there. Uh, styrene for the gel coat. I bought surfacing wax for the gel coat. And then that everglazing putty you saw me use on the uh console i bought another i had i had a can of 30 32 ounce of it i ended up using it and it was really good stuff so i bought another 32 ounce can and uh, it was great these plastic cups are for the gel coat gun i'm going to use those to go ahead and spray the gel coat uh, the thickness gauge to make sure i get the right gate uh, thickness on all around the whole the whole boat and around the console i'm sorry these paper refill cups are the, are the ones for that um these plastic cups were the plastic cup was the one, I broke the cup for the Joko gun, so I had to buy another one. And then this is all my freight charges. Now, this is kind of a couple hundred bucks. Um, in the grand total, you can see $22,508 so far. 15000 for engines, so that was me $7,508, which isn't really that bad if you take into, take into consideration that I would have bought a brand new boat for $308,000. So, um, you can save some freight charges here. You can see that I ordered twice from U.S. Composites and twice from Merit uh, for freight. And I probably could, could have combined, it though, combined those if I had known what I was going to use before and just went ahead and ordered it. So uh, the freight charges for getting it were actually, if I already gotten everything locally, it would have been more expensive than buying it and freighting it up here. So just keep that in mind when you go shop around for all this stuff. So... Now you can go ahead and leave because I've shown you the uh, how much I've spent, and uh, that's pretty much it. Twenty two thousand five hundred eight bucks. So I appreciate everyone watching, and uh, I know you only come here to watch the kids work on the boat. So finish it out with my daughter doing some coloring. Are you coloring on the boat? Hey, what do we do today? Do we fix it? What we fix? Coloring is what we fixed. I think we free glassed in all these these bulkheads. That's what I think we did today. Yeah. Two layers of biaxial glass. Yeah, that's what we did. Thumbs up. Good deal. Say bye. Bye.